Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Chief Investment Officer with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, March 22nd, 541 p.m. Eastern Time. Coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida with the Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight. The Revere Roundup, what in the heck is that? Well, we're in the process of uh, rebranding some of our social media and uh, getting ready to put more content out there. And um, you can be looking for things uh, on YouTube and social media like uh, Ted's Take and Connor's Corner and Alex's Options and Dan's Due Diligence. And uh, this is me with Don's Details, the Daily Market Insight. So uh, be looking, be on the lookout for uh, more stuff coming from Revere. But we're finding the more we get the word out there, the more people appreciate it, uh, want to learn more, and uh, protect their downside. There's nothing worse than getting close to retirement, socking away a nest egg, and having it get destroyed because you've got a deer in the headlights advisor that uh, doesn't know how to protect your downside. And this is a you can pause this and look at this. You're going to start seeing more of this. We're, we're getting, we're going to be adding some stuff to the website, but this is the difference between our active, flexible, adaptable approach at Revere and the pie chart, no changes, think long-term, stay in there all the time. Long-term is great if you've got the life duration of an oak tree, uh, but that, that doesn't happen. Uh, life comes at you fast. And when you need the money, you need the money. And if you're in the midst of a drawdown, you got a lot worse, uh, a lot less money than you had when you're in a bull market. A bull market makes geniuses out of everybody. Are you prepared when the market turns and heads south? That's what we're here for uh, at Revere. So let's get into it. State of the market. We're in an uptrend. You can see from the trend gauge over here, we've got the coveted four green arrows, market leaders. Uh, green arrow, all five of the major indexes above their short-term 21-day moving average, medium-term 50-day moving average, and long-term 200-day moving average. So what happened today? Kind of the complete opposite of yesterday. Yesterday was uh, uh, big caps lagged and mid and small held up the market. Today was the opposite. It was the big seven propping up the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 while mid and small cap pulled back. Dollar strong again for the second day. We don't like that. That's something we're keeping an eye on. Uh, and leaders taking a break. So here are the numbers on the day. Big seven, the leader, up 1.04% on average, led by NVIDIA, up 3.12%. The RG8 on the downside, down 0.93%. This is our eight growth ETF composite. Helps us keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on in mid and small growth land. Uh, S&P 500 opened flat, traded in a tight one third of a percent range all day. This is perfect action after uh, a breakout on uh, Jay Powell's comments from his presser. And as long as we hold that breakout uh, going sideways, letting the moving averages catch up a little bit is perfectly OK with us. S&P down 0.14 percent, equal weighted S&P down 0.64 percent. NASDAQ 100 up 0.11, led by the big seven. Equal weighted, weaker, as you would expect to see, minus 0.55%. Dow down 0.77%. Mid caps down 0.73. Russell 2000 small caps down 1.3. Uh, just on the downside, barely on the downside on global 6040. And this was uh, stocks down, bonds up. Uh, as rates did pull back today, bond prices higher. Global 6040 down 0.02%. In-house protection down 0.06%. Crazy last-minute candle on the indexes pulled back uh, between a tenth and 0.2%. Uh, Very strange uh, close. I wonder if zero-dated options had anything to do with that. Don't know for sure. Let's get into it. Here's the S&P 500. And uh, if you watched uh, or if you will watch our podcast, we talked a lot about uh, a level that you want to keep an eye on. And that level 
is the breakout level or where we were in the S&P 500 at 2 o'clock Eastern time on Wednesday when uh, Jay Powell's state, the FOMC statement, Jay Powell's uh, opening statement and the press conference uh, came out. And it's very rare what we saw on that day. Normally, you you have a spikes to the upside and the downside, but this was all bullish. Uh, and 51.74 was the level we were at. So 51.74 to 51.90, let's call it. As long as we hold that level on the S&P 500, uh, and of course, your individual names don't break, but uh, it's just the next leg up. It was It's an inflection point. And so far, we're holding it. We had a chance to give it up the last two days, and we absolutely did not. There was a euphoric gap up uh, and then a late drift down in the afternoon. No, no big deal there. But that followed by a very tight range day, and that's exactly what you want to see. Uh, we just don't want any pullback to uh, get into this 51.74 to 51.90 level. And if it does, we want to see it. Uh, bust out of there right away as that should act as support. And if it doesn't, uh, it's time to get more defensive. It's really as simple as that. And one thing that may get in the way of further progress to the upside or that may exacerbate that pullback is the strength in the dollar. As uh, if you listen to us, you know that uh, the current correlation and the typical correlation is inverse between uh, the dollar, a strong dollar is a headwind for stocks. A weak dollar is a tailwind. So there's the S&P 500. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100. Not a clean breakout. We've talked about that, but a declining tops uh, trend line breakout. And uh, watch to get bullish above yesterday's highs. The actual 2 p.m. pivot was 438.60. That's a level that uh, we're keeping our eye on here. We want to get the 8 EMA and the 21 day moving average above those uh, pivot levels, that 51.74 and 438.60, uh, to act as additional support on any pullback. Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, pulled back today, normal pullback, no big deal. Uh, you can see the breakout level there, pretty clear. 39.282 uh, was the pivot. Mid caps, MDY pulled back today, normal pullback. Uh, breakout of, above the not only the declining uh, declining top trend line, but also a vertical breakout above yesterday's high with uh, the relative strength that was shown yesterday in mid and small caps uh, on Thursday, and then just pulling back a little bit from that level today. Nothing wrong with that. IWM, a little bit more of a pullback down to the eight-day exponential moving average. We very much want to ha uh, hold this 21-day moving average on any pullback on the IWM. Let's go to the VIX. Actually, let's go to equal weight indexes very quickly. And nothing wrong with that either. Uh, pullback in RSP after outperforming yesterday. QQEW pullback after outperforming yesterday. Okay, now the VIX. The VIX was up a bit today, not a big deal. Uh, broke below this uh, rising trend line of higher lows. Uh, remember, this is contrary. The VIX should be going down when the market goes up, and that is what we're seeing, and that's fine now. Biggest uh, area of concern for us now is the additional follow-through strength on the dollar. Uh, what you would expect, okay, here's Jay Powell talking. Here's the dollar, and it breaks down. That corresponded with a move up in the market. Great. But we're not seeing uh, normal conditions. The dollar should be in this area, but it's not. It had a strong day on Thursday and a higher, a gap up, and it held and closed at the highs of the day on Friday. Potential problem here uh, and definitely something you need to keep an eye on. Usually uh, in times of turmoil, money flows into the U.S. dollar, but um, this is the one, uh, like I said, the one thing we're really keeping our eye on as it could act uh as a serious headwind to the markets. All right, on to, uh, well, we know the inverse correlation with gold, silver, and gold and silver stocks and the dollar. So they pulled back uh, again, GLD down 0.86%. Gold stocks down 1.2%. Silver uh, down 0.4%. Bitcoin pulled back and uh, closed below the 21-day moving average today. So uh, a little bit of weakness in Bitcoin there. On to bonds. 
broad bond index bonds gapped uh broad bond index gapped up and then traded in a very tight range uh that means yields pulled back uh here's the TLT up higher 0.96% that means you're going to see the 30 year pull back and it did uh and the 10 year as well pull back by 1.24%. Okay, that's the inter asset correlation. Let's get to the tail of the tape. You can pause this. Uh, one thing I want to point out, sentiment became less bullish. Sentiment, the sentiment numbers that we have up here, two surveys, AAII and NAAIM. When these are bullish, that is, and they get too bullish, that is a contrary bearish indicator, often marking tops. So from last week, we saw a pullback in the bulls on AAII, that's good, and a pullback on exposure in NAAIM as it got above 100 last week, and that's a typical red flag. Uh, so we did pull back on both of those. That's They're less, less bullish, which makes us more bullish or supports the bullish uh, stance that we're seeing in the overall market. Remember, it's whenever we say we're bullish, we're not. The market's bullish. And we're acting accordingly. We don't have an opinion on the market. We're agnostic. Uh, when the market's bearish, we react accordingly. When it's trending sideways, we react accordingly. When it's uptrending, we react accordingly. Um, so that's uh, it's it's what what is the market doing? That's really what the question is. Day count two. That's a two day breakout with a one day consolidation. Fifth day above the eight day exponential moving average. 52nd day above the 21 EMA. I remember thinking back when this was half of this, we've got to pull back and break the 21, don't we? Uh, but it keeps going and it's just a ride the wave situation. The market is in a bullish posture, ride the wave. Uh, interday action tight range all day, 0.3%, which is good consolidation. Uh, not a lot of good from individual sectors with the dollar being strong. Utilities strong on the downside, gold, silver, gold, and silver stocks, Bitcoin and Bitcoin-related stocks, uh, banks, oils, and real estate. As far as the portfolio goes, very uh, severe weakness on Micron early. It actually ended up slightly higher for the day. We trimmed some of that position on that weakness. As it, uh, One of our rules is you should not get a certain percent below the low of the gap update. It did, violated that rule. The rule's not perfect. No rules are, but we follow them and it um, it's just part of our process. So we trim some of that. You can certainly add it back if things uh, get better for Micron. Uh, and we added the SSO on uh, the tight action as the risk to reward is just in your favor right now for that. Uh, again, as long as we hold above that uh, 51.74. So the bottom line on the day, the big seven propped up the S&P and the NASDAQ. Leaders rested, mid and small caps lagged, but the dollar strength continued. Uh, and we'll see what next week brings. All right, look at a couple of charts here. We'll start off with the big cheese, the leader, our biggest uh, portfolio holding in uh, NVIDIA after this big a negative reversal uh, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Uh, it went sideways for a little while, never touched the 21-day moving average, beautiful action, and on above average volume, made a new uh, closing high today at 942. Uh, got about a 6% size on this, and uh, it very clearly led the portfolio today. Uh, something that has been a little bit choppy, but we've got our eye on this. If Nutanix breaks above this declining tops trend line, we're going to add to our position. Uh, right now, it's a quarter position, and this has just been chopping around the 8 and the 21-day moving average. Uh, volume patterns have been so-so. You'd like to see better, but there was strength all day uh, in this name today. Uh, let's show Micron, and we'll go to a five-minute chart. There were just no buyers out of the gate today on this. Uh, sell off, sell off, sell off. Uh, we trimmed into this weakness. Uh, and then the sell off stopped. So whoever wanted to get rid of their shares did. Uh, Micron, great numbers. Closed back inside uh, and above the high volume close. That's bullish. Like I said, we can add back to it uh, if, it, if we deem it worthy of uh, adding back to it. Weatherford. Uh, continues to make higher highs in energy land. Uh, Eli Lilly basically kind of sideways. Not a whole lot uh, of standouts today. Uh, Nugget was weak today. Bitcoin was weak, as we mentioned. Uh, Uber, 
hanging around that 80 level, looking fine there. CrowdStrike weak early, but buyers came in and supported it right at the 21-day moving average. You can see the gap down on the five-minute chart here in early uh, selling on above average volume. Buyers came in and supported it. Uh, let's see. I think that pretty much covers the portfolio. Okay, FCX, which uh, copper has been acting great. Normal pullback after the strength uh, that we've seen there. A couple of other names. Uh, SMCI. Uh, tightest range in a while, hanging around right around that 21-day moving average. Is this going to bust above this 1,000 level? Uh, it's been acting as resistance the last couple of days, but uh, I like the way this tightened up today. Um, ARM is uh, some nice tight action there, consolidating above the 21-day moving average. Uh, AMD, not so much. Uh, still hanging out around that 50-day moving average, though. Uh, Decker's a little bit of a pullback, but this is a strong stock. Uh, let's see what else. Um, Square, this is just a, I don't like, just really don't like the way this trades. It's up one day down the next. Yeah, that's kind of funny that I said that up one day down the next, aren't most all stocks? But this one teases you and sucks you in, and then it just can reverse the next day. It's prone to very choppy trading, so uh, be aware. And that's going to wrap it. As always, like to hear from you. Uh, and as always, like to make sure that you know exactly what we do here at Revere. Here's 12 points that describe exactly what we do. We're a registered investment advisor. We're not a hedge fund. We're not a mutual fund. It's got separately managed accounts. Everybody has full access to their, to their account through Charles Schwab. We don't custody assets. We've got a dual mandate, grow assets during market uptrends, protect them during market downtrends. And uh, here's a little bit about how we determine how much money we're going to have in the market at any time. And it's based on what the market feedback is telling us. As always, like to hear from me, the email is Donna If you're interested in becoming a client, email my partner, Dan Stewart, Dan at RiveraAsset.com. The phone's 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. Our website, RiveraAsset.com. YouTube channel, just search for Revere Asset. Please like and subscribe. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up for the week ending March 22nd. This is Don Vandenboer with Revere Asset Management. Telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend.